Hey buddies, Potomac Whiskey here, and today we are going to be doing a Natural Wonder tier list. We'll be going through them alphabetically, starting with the Chocolate Hills and ending with this wonder over here that I have no idea how to pronounce. Zangjai Dangxia. Zangjai Dangxia? Zangjai Dangxia. All right, I'm just going to call it Zangyi Dang. First up, we have the Chocolate Hills. This isn't actually too bad of a wonder, but it definitely belongs in C tier. It provides decent yields, but it's kind of just a better Plains Hill that can't be improved. It does fit into national parks nicely, and it does give you a ton of adjacency for holy sites if that's the route you want to go. But otherwise, I can't justify giving it a higher rating. Next up, we've got the Cliffs of Dover, which is arguably the best wonder in the game to re-roll your start instantly because this natural wonder is essentially like deleting two tiles out of your empire it has absolutely dog crap yields no food it's hard to put in national parks it's maybe good for one holy site with plus four or more adjacency and honestly when i see this in my games i'm genuinely disappointed Crater Lake, on the other hand, is probably equally just as bad. <laughs> yeah, it just has bad yields. It's a bad tile to work. I guess it's technically better to work this than a Holy Site Specialist slot, but that's really the nicest thing that I can say about this wonder. Now, the Dead Sea is also going to fit nicely into F tier, and it's kind of the same problem that Crater Lake has. It just has bad yields, no food, no production, and there's not really a whole lot you can do with this other than maybe getting fresh water off. Delicate Arch, on the other hand, does deserve a little bit more praise because at the very least, it does give you some yields on the adjacent tiles and those tiles can potentially be improved uh, if they're hills you can turn them into mines if you have certain city states you can improve them if you grab petra it becomes a really good natural wonder um, but the problem is it's just a desert it's a desert natural wonder and desert natural wonders are just arguably always weak and the reason for that is because desert tiles are just kind of the worst base tiles in the game it does become really good if like Niter spawns on it or something like that or Niter or Oil in the mid to late game. But generally speaking, a lot of other wonders are going to give you a lot more value earlier into the game. Next up is the Eye of the Sahara. And this kind of has the same problem as Delicate Arch in that it's a desert wonder, but it's actually worse. So it's going to go down to F tier. And the reason for that is it, it's, it's a desert natural wonder where the tiles that are adjacent to it can't be improved. Or, or rather, the tiles the tiles itself can't be improved. Um, if you do get a Petra, it's like an okay wonder, and it fits nicely into national parks at the very least. But that's about all the good things that I can say about it. Generally, it's just kind of a pretty bad natural wonder outside of any of those situations. Ayayala Fokul. I have no idea how to pronounce this. I gave it a go. Ayayala Yokul. Um... There you go. There's my best attempt. This is actually a really, 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 really good wonder. I would, mm, I'm kind of thinking that it deserves to be, like, I think it should be A tier, but my problem with it is that it's a volcano and volcanoes can erupt and do a lot of damage to your civilization. Unless you have Liang with the specific promotion that prevents damage to your civ from natural disasters. Um, the tiles can be improved, but the volcano erupting will damage them so it's a bit of a double-edged sword in that it's actually a really damn good wonder but it doesn't do the job for me purely based on the fact that it erupts and does damage to your infrastructure now the galapagos are a bit of an odd one actually they're kind of hard to place they kind of feel like they should be a tier because they give you a ton of science but on the other hand they kind of spawn in like awkward spots so maybe they should be c tier or maybe even b tier i, I think i would put them into B tier, um, but they could easily jump or fall a tier depending on the situation and their spawn location. Like if they spawn in the perfect spawn location and they have resources on the tiles so that you can improve them with fishing boats, then it's like easily an A tier wonder. But like generally it's gonna sit around the B tier spot. Now it can be improved by building a harbor, by building a lighthouse, by building shipyards. And uh, if you get Sue's Vanity of Auckland, you can get extra production on the tiles. It's just, it's just an all around good wonder but too often it kind of spawns in a bit of an awkward spot to really justify going any higher. And in all honesty, it probably deserves to be C tier. Giant's Causeway is a natural wonder that... It's kind of one of these natural wonders that sometimes it feels like it's an S tier wonder because all of your units are getting the promotion. And sometimes it feels like F tier because none of your strategies revolve around making use of it. But, but I do feel like in general, especially playing on higher difficulties, 
that a plus five combat strength bonus on your land units is really, really valuable. And so for that reason, I think it deserves to be up here at the A tier. Um, so basically, plus five combat strength allows you to essentially overcome the plus four combat strength that DD AI have. The really great thing about it is you don't have to do anything special with it. It works on the defense, it works on the offense. You just have to have your unit walk up next to it and it gets that bonus permanently, especially since um, I, I do think in the past, this would have easily been like a D or E tier wonder, but since they fixed the units carrying promotions and upgrades through their level ups, or rather made an adjustment there, I think this has kind of jumped up to like an A tier wonder. Gabu Stan is like, I mean, on paper, I kind of feel like it should be a good wonder and should maybe sit around the middle. But in the end, I, I feel like it just always ends up in E tier for me. And the reason for that is that it, it's mostly only nice for holy side adjacency. Um, it's hard to justify working the actual tiles of the natural wonder and they can't be improved. Just like all of the wonders that can't be improved, like Chocolate Hills, like Pantanal and the Marsh one. Oh God, I forget the name of this one. Obsoner Hollow. Like all of these natural wonders, they kind of just lack something in that they're good for holy side adjacency in national parks, but yeah, it's just hard to justify working them. Because and, and here's why it's hard to justify working them. Yes, it does give good yields, but you have to imagine every single tile in the game has like a hidden yield that's minus two food because that's what it costs to work the tile. Each population in your city is eating two food. And so if you're working a tile that gives you a certain yield and not getting food from it, that's a really hard upkeep to pay. Because in order to work that tile, you're gonna have to have farms improved somewhere. And, and so that's the reason why I feel like it belongs in E tier. The Great Barrier Reef. Now, this is a natural wonder that I actually had to deliberate a bit about where exactly it deserved to be on the tier list. I really debated about B, A, and S tier for a long time, but I decided that it would be the very first S tier natural wonder. And the reason for that is it's incredibly good to get it early, right? Plus three food, plus two science. Those are the kind of yields. It's it's like working a farm, like a, like a, a started game grassland farm with a scientific specialist slot in a campus. Like that is just so good. The other thing is kind of like the Galapagos, it can be improved if you have um, a harbor in the city and with Auckland as well, it can get really, really good yields. And the only real major downside of it is that it doesn't count for campus adjacency. If you place a campus beside it, it doesn't get the extra reef adjacency, which does make me a little bit sad. I would like to see the developers maybe update that. And I definitely feel like all of the natural wonders, say maybe D, D tier or below, deserve like a little adjustment to make them a little bit better. How Long Bay is another one of these. It was kind of hard to place it. On the one, like my heart says S tier, because this is easily one of my favorite wonders in the game. But I, I think it really does, like, man, I, I really felt like the, the battle between the Great Barrier Reef and Ha Long Bay was actually a really hard struggle for me. Um, but I decided that Ha Long Bay would be A tier rather than S tier. And the basic logic of that is it's basically a runner-up um, Great Barrier. Although, arguably, in certain circumstances, it's really, really strong. Just the power of science can't be denied. Um, science can really make you snowball and run away with games. Personally, I think I would prefer Halong Bay in like most of my games, but I do think that Great Barrier is actually stronger. And like I said, it could be improved with the harbor and Auckland and all these things. And that's why these water natural wonders are really, really great. Like if you get a mausoleum in a city with one of these natural wonders, Oh my god, the yields get insane. But unlike Petra cities, the yields are already decent to start with. Whereas like in a Petra city, you're kind of relying on a Petra to do most of that heavy lifting. Whereas Mausoleum is like icing on top. Ick, kill. I don't know how to pronounce this wonder's name. But honestly, the nicest thing that I can say about it is that it's it's a it's a it's the best of the lake natural wonders. Honestly, I probably think it deserves F. But at the very least, it does provide some production. Also, I imagine how many comments am I going to get that I didn't line them up neatly like this. All right, I'll do it. I'll make the sacrifice, okay? This is just, this is probably the only redeeming factor of it is that it is the best lake natural wonder. 
the extra 50% production is really nice when you're building wonders and, and districts beside it. But like it, it's pretty short lived and it doesn't do much else beside that. Lake Retba also kind of fits into this same problem in that it's a lake natural wonder. Lake natural wonders just have really bad yields. Um, it's hard to justify working it. And again, the nicest thing I can say about it is that it gives you fresh water. And a little bit of holy side adjacency. And that's about it. The Lysifjord, Lysifjord, I don't know how to say this uh, wonder's name, but I imagine it's like Lysifjord. Lysifjord. Um, it isn't bad. It's kind of like a, a naval giant's causeway, but just worse. Because instead of it giving you a permanent like combat bonus, it gives you a promotion. It, it's not awful. But the, the fact that it doesn't give yields and, and stuff like that just makes it kind of weak. And navies are just generally less useful and less important compared to armies in general. It does give you a little bit of holy side adjacency. Like I can see that there's a little bit of use in this. But generally it's it's like honestly I could put this in F tier and feel no pain about it. But I'm going to put it in D tier just because I do think it's a fun and interesting wonder. And if you can make use of it, it is quite useful and powerful. Mato Tapila. This is a wonder I went back and forth from, like whether it belonged in C to A tier. And I feel like I, I settled on the right spot for it, which is B tier. B tier is a really good spot for this wonder. And it mainly just comes down to the idea that wonders that give you extra yields on tiles are just really, really nice. And this one gives you production and faith. And production and faith are two really, really good yields. It's just an all around nice wonder. It, it, nothing exceptional, but generally just a good wonder. Like it, it doesn't do anything amazing, but it has zero downsides and it only takes up a tiny bit of room. So it's, it's just great. The Matterhorn is, it, it's kind of just like, kind of like the Lysifjord and the Giant's Causeway. It improves your units. But the big problem with it is that it's kind of like a runner's up, um, a runner's up Giant's Causeway. Now, it does something really nice that the Giant's Causeway doesn't do, which is that it does give you free culture. So there are situations where I think the Matterhorn is better. But like the Giant's Causeway is a flat plus five combat strength bonus. And this is like a plus three when you're on hills and you have extra hill movement. I think there are situations where Giant's Causeway and Matterhorn could like flip and Matterhorn could be A and Giant's Causeway could be B, but this is just kind of where I feel like these fit. I, I do think though you could very easily justify putting it into A tier and putting Giant's Causeway down into B. Mount Everest, oh man, it's really hard to put it anywhere but D tier. The the big problem is it does give you a decent amount of faith and it gives you great adjacency for holy sites, but but beyond that, it doesn't really do much for you outside of a religion game. And even then, a little bit of extra freedom of movement is pretty lackluster for religious units who already tend to be pretty mobile. I, I just can't really justify giving this a higher bonus. Like maybe it could fit into C tier. That would be the highest I would ever put it. But to me, I kind of feel like it's a D tier wonder because it's related to religious victories and it only gives you faith. So it's kind of like, eh, it's just kind of only really deserves to be down here. Mount Kilimanjaro, on the other hand, is a little bit better than Mount Everest, I feel like. In fact, I think it's quite a bit better and it actually deserves to be up here in B tier. In an ideal situation, this would actually be in A or S tier. But the big problem is it kind of, again, like Vesuvius and the other exploding volcano wonders, is that it has a tendency to erupt and do damage to your cities. The extra food is a great yield, which can really snowball a city that settles this. And if you, if you want to, you can take advantage of the adjacency. I, I don't think that's what you should do, but it's it's really held back. It's, it's kind of in a weird situation because it's held back by the fact that it explodes and erupts, but that also helps it because it tends to fertilize the tiles adjacent to it. But yeah, I, I just I just can't see myself putting it in A. Like, like, I don't think it deserves to go lower than B tier, but I have a hard time saying, yeah, it's an A tier wonder. Now, Mount Roraima, on the other hand, is another mountain wonder, and this just straight away goes all the way up to S tier. There's not even a debate. This is arguably the best natural wonder in the game, maybe tied with uh, Torres or Pio. It's, it has this really unique shape that, um, unlike other four tile natural wonders, you get a lot more value out of this natural wonder set of bonus adjacency because it just touches so many tiles in a very unique way that a lot of other natural wonders that are kind of in these blobby shapes don't do. If you find this natural wonder early into your games, 
you have a ton of ways that you can use it. You can use it for a ridiculous holy site. You can just work the tiles and improve them. It's a really flexible and really powerful natural wonder. Mount Vesuvius is really just kind of like a weaker Mato Tapila, but it can erupt and give you some nice new yields. But the big problem with Vesuvius is that it tends to kill your population if it's too close to your city. And so, the, so for that reason, I think it belongs in C tier. I mean, I could see an argument for it being B or A tier, but I really, like when you compare it to some of these other Volcano Wonders and Mato Tapila, it, it just, it, I can't go higher than C. We've been doing a lot of the top half of the tier list now, and we're gonna have to come back down for Pamukkala. And unfortunately, this is an E tier wonder. It's just kind of not great. It, it's okay, like it's, that's the thing about E tier. E tier wonders are like, yeah, they're okay. And that's really all I can say about Pamakala. It's not a terrible wonder. It's actually quite good. But the problem is that it takes a lot of investment to actually get the value out of this wonder. When you compare that to something like Mount Roraima or the Great Barrier Reef or Halong Bay, these just give you a ton of yields when you settle the city on top of them. For Pamakala, you have to settle it. You do get the uh, amenity for free, I think, but you have to then build districts adjacent to it. And that just takes a lot of time. Now, Pantanal is, oh man, Pantanal was a hard one to place as well. On, on the one hand, I kind of feel like it's the best of the unimprovable natural wonders like Upsoner, Chocolate Hills and... Um, Gobu Stan. But man, I, I really feel like it and Chocolate Hills could swap places. Like I think Chocolate Hills could go down to D tier and then Pantanal could take its spot in C. I because the nice thing about Pantanal is that it's like working a theater square specialist slot, but you get plus two food. Like you don't actually pay the upkeep on the specialist. And that's what really kind of makes it stand out as as these workable wonders. And I think that's what makes it jump up. Just just jump up to C tier and the really nice thing about it and some of these other wonders is because of its shape it does fit really nicely into national parks so that's like a big plus in my opinion. The problem is that like its yields get kind of outdated very quickly and it's very hard to justify actually working it. Pio Pio Tahi this is another wonder that like there's not even a question it goes straight to S tier. The sheer amount of gold and culture that this wonder gives you is insane. If I see this in my games, I basically always beeline it to try and settle it. The Like the culture and gold and the insane yields, because it typically is coastal. So you can get crazy good yields on the tiles with stuff like fisheries. A harbour with a lighthouse and a shipyard gives it extra food and production. And you end up with these like, you know, four, three to four food, two to three two to three production tiles uh, that are also have culture and loads of gold once you have the seaport. It, it's just ridiculous. And like on top of all that, it gives you great adjacency for holy sites if that's what you want to do. Although I find it hard to kind of crush those uh, really nice two, two culture, two gold tiles that are kind of wedged in beside it. And I always have a hard time fitting in international wonders. But other than that, like it's a really nice just A plus S tier wonder. Now for every king at the top of the list, there is going to be a pawn at the bottom. And unfortunately, Sahara El Beta belongs down here in f tier and, and the reality is it, it, it's a desert wonder it's a desert wonder where the tiles can't be improved and that's really all i have to say about it it, it can be really nice if you have petra it can be really nice if you have nazca in your game and you can get those nazca lines beside it but other than that it's it's just like it has all of the problems of things like pantanal chocolate hills gobblestan but it's a desert wonder like and it's the same for the eye of sahara like these are already have like traits that are working against them and then you add in that they're desert wonders and it's just downhill torres del Paine or pain or whatever it's called is another one it just jumps straight to s tier like it doubles the yields of the tiles that are adjacent to it if you get grassland hills beside this thing that's four food to production if you get plains hills that's two food for production this thing is ridiculous it like if you I, i've had one or two games uh, in my in my Civ career as it is as it were where I spawned next to this thing and I just I knew I'd won the game instantly that's how strong this thing is the sheer amount of food and production that it gives you is honestly ridiculous and like add to the fact that the tiles can spawn with resources the tiles can spawn with forests on top so you get to chop them and improve them this thing is just 
out and out just a ridiculously good natural wonder. Now, Tsingi is another one of these wonders that I have a hard time placing. And the reason is, <laughs> my problem with Tsingi is that it always spawns on Tundra for me. If Tsingi reliably spawned on non-Tundra tiles, it would instantly jump up to A or S tier. But the fact of the matter is, every time I see this wonder, it's on a Tundra tile and boosting Tundra tiles, which just makes me like almost die a little bit inside. And so for that reason, I can't really justify putting it on anything higher than C tier. Upsunner Hollow kind of has a similar problem. It spawns on Tundra all the time and its yields aren't that amazing. It is nice. Like, I feel like this feels like a C tier wonder. But then when you compare it to the Tsingi, I feel like it falls down, like down to a D tier. And, and, and again, it's like the Pantanal, the Chocolate Hills and Gabustan and the Sahara uh, are, and the Eye of the Sahara all of these things have the same thing in common they are unimprovable large natural wonders great for holy sites great for um national parks great for all that kind of stuff but generally just kind of weak in comparison to things like halong bay and mount roraima Uluru is arguably arguably the best desert natural wonder and that unfortunately only really gets it up to a D tier. I could see an argument for it going up to C tier maybe. But then I remember that it's a desert natural wonder. Which really just like I don't think a desert natural wonder can ever go above like a D tier. Just the fact that the, the, the probability that you'll actually be able to work the tiles that this thing spawns yields on. Even though the yields that it spawns are amazing are just so low. And you'll almost need a Petra or to be playing a save like Australia. Now, I will say this. A Delicate Arch and a Luru, if you're playing Australia, they jump up two tiers. Like, this becomes a B-tier wonder. This becomes a, a C-tier wonder just instantly. And that's because of the Outback Station that you can build inside of Desert Tiles as Australia. All right, second last wonder. That is Yosemite. It's, it's just an all-around solid wonder. The only thing really holding it back compared to Pio Pio Tahi is that it's a two tile natural wonder. Arguably the yields on this thing are actually better than Pio Pio Tahi. And in a lot of my games, it's kind of like the Halong Bay in that I feel like I would actually prefer this over its cultural counterpart. Like I feel like the Halong Bay is the cultural counterpart of the um, Great Barrier Reef. You know what? You know what? I'm swapping these. I've, I've decided I made my decision. I like, I like the, uh, man, I'm really having a hard time. No, I, th I think Yosemite. I'm swapping. Oh, Great Barrier Reef, you're going to, to A tier. Halong Bay, you're S tier. In my heart, you're S tier. You probably belong down in like B tier, but you're S tier in my heart. No, 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 no. That's where I really want to put them, but really it does belong in, in, in S tier. Um, But yeah, Yosemite, definitely an A tier wonder. Um, it, It's basically just like a slightly worse P.O.P.O. tie. And it's only slightly worse because it's slightly smaller. That's like the only thing holding it back. And arguably it's better because it spawns inland. But that's a downside potentially as well. Because it might spawn with mountains too close to it. And hard to work and all that sort of stuff. In my games, I, if I spawned with either of these wonders, I would be so happy. Like just, they're both great. And now the last, but not the least. It does belong in E tier. The Zhang Yi Dangxia? I... Uh, the thing about this wonder is it, it doesn't really do a lot. However, the earlier you find this wonder and the earlier you settle it, it actually does provide you quite a bit of value. Um, like realistically, plus four great people points is probably worth on the order of like 60 gold per turn. Like that's like the real gold value of those two things. Maybe, maybe, maybe 40 to 60 gold would be a more reasonable estimate. But the problem with that value is even though that value is like super high, it's really hard to justify putting that like, like, or not justify, sorry. It's really hard to translate that value into like on the map value. Having a look at this, I, I think there are a few swaps that could be made, but I think the most important thing to do is to make sure that we single out the Cliffs of Dover as literally being the worst natural wonder in the game. This wonder is so bad that... I effectively think of it as deleting two tiles from my empire when I have it in my games. The only time it's marginally useful is when you're playing England on a TSL start and you want to get a plus four holy site right out the gate. Other than that, it's pure and total garbage. 
anyway that's it for the tier list i hope you guys enjoyed this tier list let me know if there was anything you liked anything you didn't like if you disagree with me on any of my calls here let me know down in the comments i love you all very much and i'll see you guys next time bye bye <laughs>